Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives, the only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening, and now, enjoy the show. the soul, and wise and beautiful, the seeds of godlike power are in us still. Gods we are, gods, saints, heroes, if we will. If we will. Oh, what an infinity of possibilities. A cat may look at a queen, said Mr. John Haywood, but according to Mr. Matthew Arnold, a cat may aspire to become a king. All it takes is a great deal of willpower and a little bit of luck. Or is it the other way around? Bartender, I'll have a drink. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Don't shoot. Don't shoot? If you're going to kill me, kill me. But don't make fun of me. Well, why should I kill you? I don't know. Why did you kill a hundred other men? Maybe you just enjoy it. Do you know who I am? You. You're Black Eagle. Black Eagle? Yes. Black Eagle, the greatest desperado in the history of the West. Oh, please don't kill me. Wow. What do you know about that? Our mystery drama, The Passing of Black Eagle was adapted from the O. Henry classic, especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan, and stars Robert Dryden and Larry Haynes. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Throughout the entire year of 1905, a certain grim bandit infested most of the southern part of Texas along the Rio Grande River. He was known only as Black Eagle... Many fearsome tales are on record concerning the depredations caused by him and his followers. Then suddenly, within the space of a single minute, Black Eagle vanished. He was never seen or heard of again. The border ranches and settlements lived in terror that he would come once more to ride and ravage. But he never will. Who says so? Why, O. Henry says so. And why is O. Henry so sure? The reason I say so? Well, it's because Black Eagle's my character. Well, not really. I must be truthful. He wasn't originally my character. But I bought him fair and square from the man who invented him. A man named Chicken. I first met Chicken on Herald Square in New York City, where he was hard at work. His job? Panhandling. Good afternoon, sir. Could you spare a thirsty individual a price of a glass of whiskey? A glass of whiskey? Well, a, a small glass. <laughs> At least you're honest. Uh, wouldn't you be better off if you cut out the booze? Oh, why would I be better off? Because you could make something of yourself. Oh, well, sir, I think I have made something of myself. Yes? What? I'm the best panhandler on Herald Square. I'll go further. I'm the best panhandler south of 42nd Street. Is that something to be proud of? Sir, there are four million so-called human beings breathing the air above this particular city. How many of them can say they're the best in anything? Are you the best in what you do? Well, I'm, I'm trying to be. Well, that's my point. You're still trying. I've already arrived. What's your name? Chicken. Why chicken? Oh, I suppose it's because I look like a chicken. Ah, uh, sir, we have palavered and chewed the fat, as it were, long enough. Can I have ten cents for a glass of whiskey? I can't afford non-revenue conversation. I've got my reputation to consider. Well, you won't get a very good glass of whiskey for ten cents. No, there's no such thing as bad whiskey. Yeah, but that stuff will ruin you. Oh, no, sir, that stuff saves me. Saves you? Yes, sir, because it reminds me who I am. And who are you? Chicken. Chicken. <laughs> 
A panhandler. Nothing more, nothing less. I cut out the ten-cent whiskey once, and you know what it gave me? Delusions of grandeur. You see, I'm not like other people. Most folks get drunk when they drink. I get drunk when I'm sober. Do you follow this? Well, yeah, I'm, I'm managing to hang on, uh, barely. When I'm sober, I'm drunk with power. Why, last year, if I stayed sober, do you know where I'd be now? No. Well, I'd be dead or alive. And either way, I'd be the most feared outlaw in Texas. Is that a fact? Now, don't tell me you never heard of Black Eagle. Breeze, there a man who reads the tabloids and has never heard of Black Eagle? Yeah, but what has Black Eagle got to do with you? I am Black Eagle. You're Black Eagle? I'm Black Eagle. But Black Eagle disappeared from the face of the earth. I'm Black Eagle. Black Eagle's dead. I'm Black Eagle. Well, how can you be Black Eagle? Oh, no, no. I can't give that away for the price of a drink. <laughs> How about a drink and a dinner? Sir, you struck a nerve. More of anything? Oh, more of everything. Uh, waiter, uh, waiter, this gentleman here is still hungry. Uh, you, sir, are an excellent host. And while we're waiting, the story of Black Eagle. Oh, well, sir, for many years, I have wintered in the South. The South. Uh, if you should ever become a bum, and it's a splendid life, spend the cold months in the Southwest. The best place is the Texas cattle country. The Texas cattle country? Uh, Why, well, I would think that... I know, Texas... I know what you would think, but you're wrong. They're the sweetest, kindest, gentlest people in the world. Mild and salubrious, just like the climate. Oh, yes, it's always spring. There's always music in the plazas. Well, there I was in a saloon in this little border town of Las Rojas. And the bartender was lecturing me on my morals and my lineage when I was enjoying the free lunch. Why, you low-down, wall-eyed, thieving varmint? You ever earned an honest dollar in your whole misbegotten life? No, sir, but I never earned a dishonest one either. You know what you look like? You look like a chicken. Yeah, a miserable, no-account barnyard chicken. Scratching here and picking there and... Uh-oh, you better run for your life. What, what, what? You, 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 your life is in mortal danger. Here she comes down the street. Here who comes? Faith Hope Alabaster. Well, who is she? Colonel Jethro Alabaster's sister. Well, why is my life in mortal danger? Because one look at you, and it is an obvious... Fact. What is? That, that you're a drinking man. Well, I, I never denied it, nor try to hide it. Well, friend, Miss Faith Hope is with the Anti-Saloon League. She's president, vice president, secretary, treasurer. Now, she comes in here regular and busts up the place. Of course, later, the colonel pays for the damage. But you better leave. You mean she just comes right in and breaks up everything? That's the truth. And you let her do it? Well, it seems like the wisest thing to do. It does? Yeah, yeah. you see, she has this fella who works as her handyman. Yeah. A fella by the name of Percy. Percy? That's right. And if anybody interfered with her, why, Percy wouldn't like it. You mean the folks hereabouts are scared of what a fella named Percy might or might not like? Well, that's about the size of it. Well, it's a peculiar town. Well, as I was saying, I have to stay here, but you'd better leave. Why? Because she'll take one look at you and she won't let you live. She'll jaw at you and lecture you. Uh-oh, uh it's too late. Chicken looked toward the door. There was a woman, about middle-aged, Skinny, scrawny, about five feet tall, a hammer in her hand and fire in her eye. And in back of her, a man so tall he could have pulled the ears off a giraffe. So wide he had to edge in sideways through the double doors of the saloon and so heavy, the floor seemed to sag beneath his feet. Wait here, Percy. Our work shall be done in a moment. Uh, good morning, Miss Faith Hope. What a good morning it would be if you were prevented from pouring your poison freely down the throats of the unsuspecting. Now, now, now Miss Faith Hope, a man's entitled to his bit of relaxation and balm. Balm? 
The devil's brew you peddle here is born for the everlasting fires of Hades. Uh, now, now, now Miss Faith. This it... foul elixir must be destroyed. Oh, please don't bust me up today. It's payday, and the boys will be in from all the ranches. And if they don't have their liquid refreshment, that, that they'll be powerful mad. These are the waters of Sodom and Gomorrah. They must be destroyed. Yeah, yeah, well, 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 couldn't you do it tomorrow? I mean, that's my slowest day. And I... Now! <laughs> Please! Now! Oh, oh, oh. Now or never! We must strike now or be lost forever! Oh, Miss Faith, oh. Do not send to us for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for thee! Oh, ma'am. You never heard the proverb, waste not, want not. Break! Break, you evil glass! And so may Satan's hold be broken from the earth. Every single obscene vassal of evil. Uh, all right, Miss Faith Hope. I would say that you got the lot. None, not one shall escape me. I shall seek them out. And destroy them to the last. Well, I'd say you've done it this time. <laughs> what is it, Percy? <laughs> oh, is that a fact? You, you there, you. Uh, me? Yes, yes, you. You, uh, you put a bottle away in your shirt. Oh, I'm sure you're mistaken. Hand it over, please. Well, I, I don't know anything about a bottle. The bottle. Uh, you'd better give her the bottle. <laughs> no, 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 Percy, don't. I, I'm sure he'll see reason. No, wait, wait, no. No, Percy, don't! Oh. oh, Mother, I drank all my milk, and I don't feel any stronger. I still look like a chicken. I do, Mother, I do. Everybody says I do. Oh, my head. It hurts. Oh, everything's gone round and round. And where, where am I? What, 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 what is it? You are here. Oh, where is here? My house. And who are you? I am Faith Hope Alabaster. I'm sorry. Percy uh, doesn't know his own strength. Oh. At first we thought you were dead. Oh, I feel dead. And so we carried you to Deacon Fallowill's livery stable. Oh. He, he's the undertaker. You were being measured for a coffin when your eyelids fluttered. <laughs> it's a shame. Everyone was looking forward to the funeral. Oh, well, I hope no one was disappointed. Oh, you'll be disappointed. I bought you the most beautiful coffin. Oh, well, that was very kind of you. Well, it was the least I could do. Well, now that I'm not going to be buried, I'd better be moving along. Oh, no, you couldn't possibly leave now. For two reasons. First, you're too weak to travel. And second, your soul has to be saved. Ah, well, well, ma'am, there's one remedy that can take care of both of these contingencies. There is? Yes, yes, it'll, it'll make me feel well enough to travel, and it'll sure save my soul. Mm -hmm. Now, what's that? Look, a bottle of good old ten-cent whiskey. Oh, you can't drink whiskey anymore. I can't? Why not? Because you've taken the pledge. Pledge? I don't remember taking any. What I meant was, you're going to take the pledge. Oh, now, ma'am, I have no such intention. Oh, but Percy and I have a heart set on your salvation. Surely you couldn't disappoint us. Now, I ask for nothing, ma'am, but to be let alone. Now, sir, could you find it in your heart to disappoint Percy? <laughs> uh, no, 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 now that you mention it. How... Could anyone disappoint Percy? Well, how do we feel this morning? I don't know how we feel. I feel like dying. Oh, that doesn't last long. <sighs> tell me, why do you drink? Well, you don't have to tell me. You drink because everybody calls you chicken. Oh, people call me chicken because I look like a chicken. No. You don't look like a chicken. I don't? What do I look like? Well, you look like a bird. A bird? Is that better? Oh, yes. Because even if you do look like a bird, it doesn't mean you have to look like a chicken. Or you could also look like an eagle. An eagle? Would you like to look like an eagle? Well, it's better than looking like a chicken. But if you do what I tell you, 
You're going to remind people of an eagle, a mighty eagle that soars above the mundane concerns of the earth. An eagle, the ruler of the skies and all he surveys. An eagle, the loftiest work of the creator. Uh, what do I have to do? Oh, it's very simple. You must never take another drink of that cheap, terrible... Oh, no, oh, no, no. Percy, you think you might be able to convince him? Uh-huh. All, all, all right. I, I'm convinced. I am convinced. What is that little verse? A man convinced against his will must remain a doubter still. Is that the way it goes? Well, something like it, anyhow. Well, we're about to witness a conversion. For better or for worse, only time will tell, and not too much time at that, for I shall return with the second act in a few minutes. We're listening to an O. Henry yarn called The Passing of Black Eagle. And although we have a fairly good idea who Black Eagle is going to be, so far we have not seen him in action. And already there may be some grumbling out there. How do we propose to transform this rather amiable hobo chicken into the ruthless, homicidal Black Eagle? Well, just remember, us poets, we have licenses. Uh, what, what do I uh, have to do to become an eagle? You must take the pledge. The pledge? Mm-hmm. Oh, I took the pledge maybe 25, 30 times. It never made me become anything but thirsty. Oh, but this time, you must take the pledge and mean it. Percy shall see to it that you keep it. Mm-hmm. Poor chicken. The days passed and he lived through the tortures of the damned. Percy walked with him everywhere, never let him out of his sight. Percy enforced the law, and Chicken obeyed the law. After a while, strange things began to happen inside of Chicken. Strange feelings, urges, ideas. He would sit in silence for hours, thinking and talking to himself. Miss Faith Hope Alabaster says I could look like an eagle. Well, the fact is, many people can remind you of some kind of animal. At least I don't remind people of a pig or a hyena. No, I'm an eagle. And the world will hear from me. I'm sorry we had to leave you here all alone in the house. But there was work to do once again in Jack Marlborough's saloon. Oh, how did it go? Oh, it always goes well. Here, I brought you something. What? Oh, what does it look like? A bottle of whiskey, of course. Salvage from the wreckage. Here, take it. Oh, uh, but what, what, what do you want me to do with it? What do you wish to do with it? Well, good night. She'd left the bottle on the table. He looked at it for a moment. And then he yawned, stretched, and fell fast asleep. And he dreamed. It was a marvelous dream. There was an eagle. An enormous eagle. A black eagle. And this eagle, it it soared high in the sky... Every time it flew above people, everyone became scared and started to run. Everywhere the eagle flew, there were other eagles who flew with him. Oh, they were much smaller eagles and not nearly so strong nor handsome. But they followed this big black eagle. And his word was law. He was black eagle, ruler of all he surveyed. Ah, good morning. Oh, oh, good morning. Congratulations. Ah, on what? Oh, you passed the test. What's, what test? The bottle. You see? It's full. Oh. Oh, I, I didn't even think of that. Well, that's why you passed the test. And now you are prepared to go out into the world and become an eagle. An eagle? An eagle among men. 
I've, uh, I've got a present for you. Here. Oh. Oh, I... I couldn't take so much money. Oh, uh, it's not very much. Only a hundred dollars. A hundred dollars? You can't give me a hundred dollars. Why not? That's too much. To start life anew? With an eagle? No, well, I'll, I'll be tempted to, to... Oh, no, 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 no. No longer. You have conquered temptation. Now, go out and become an eagle. Uh, what, what, what's an eagle supposed to do? Well, an eagle's supposed to... He's supposed to... Well, he's like all the rest of us, I guess. He's just supposed to do the best he can. Chicken walked down the streets of Las Rojas with a hundred dollars in his pocket. Never had he seen, much less possessed, such a munificent sum in his entire lifetime. He didn't know where he was going or even what he wanted to do. Then he passed by a shop that said gentlemen's furnishings. And he looked at his ragged coat, trousers, and before he knew what he was doing, he'd walked inside the door. It was a small shop, rather dark and musty, as if no one had been in there in years. Chicken was almost ready to walk out when an incredibly old man seemed to materialize out of nowhere. Could you uh, show me an old second-hand suit? <laughs> that black eagle, black eagle, is it you? Who? <laughs> yeah, it's you. Come back from the dead. Uh, look, all I want is an old... You were killed in 71. That's mighty nine thirty-five years ago. Uh, no, no, I wasn't. That's but... what I said. You wasn't. Everybody maintained you was dead. But I'm the one kept saying you can't kill Black Eagle. And it's true, you're alive. You're alive. Uh, sir, sir, I, I fear you have me confused. Uh, confused, with, with... that's what everybody keeps saying to me, Pop. you confused. What did they say if they could see you now? Oh, I knew them Yankee bullets could never bring you down. I knew it, boy. Uh, sir, all I want... Sir, <laughs> who you call it, sir? It's me. It's Pop. Old Pop Needles, I give you your first horse, your first gun, your first drink of liquor. Uh, uh, sir, I need some clothes. Yeah, I know that, son. You look aside. Yeah, you look aside. I, I came in here to buy an old second hand. Buy? You think you can buy anything from old Pop? I got your old black suit here. I kept it clean and ready waiting for you. Yeah, yeah, but uh, you see... I... Come on, get, get, get into it. You'll see how nice it fits you. Well, I'm not sure that I... Oh, that they I... belong to you, son. Oh, I knew you had to come back one day. Uh, well, I, I, I really didn't want to buy such, such a black... And, and look what I've been holding for you. Mm. Your two Navy Colt 44s. Cleaned and oiled and ready. Now, 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 you just wrap that cartridge belt around you and place them six shooters in the holsters where they belong. And oh, oh, my, yes, it's Black Eagle come back again. Oh, sir, I, I am not Black Eagle. I, I know, I know. It's a, it's a hanging if the Yankees find out. But, but you can trust me. I'm Pop. Oh, Pop. Now, now I'll tell you what. I'll hide you here till it gets dark, and then I'll get you a horse. Oh, but, but I... I... Now, 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 boy, you gotta be careful. After all, never forget, you're Black Eagle. Then and there, Black Eagle was born. Or at least, he was christened. And poor Chicken caught a glimpse of himself in the black suit, the wide black sombrero, the black silk neckerchief, the black gloves. And it was a sight to chill the blood. For here indeed was a black eagle, a killer black eagle. A black eagle meant to perform black deeds. And so Black Eagle mounted the horse that the old man had given him and rode off into the night to begin a legend. Yes, a legend. He had everything he once thought a man could want. The power of money, the adoration of women, the fear and respect of men. But still, 
He was unhappy. Without knowing why. But now we must leave Black Eagle for just a moment and repair to the campsite of one Bud King. Bud King is an outlaw and the head of a band of outlaws. Outlaws who held sway in the country that lays between the Rio Grande and the Nueces River. Bud is talking with a female companion, a lady we shall call Kitty. You know where Charlie and one I are tonight, Bud? I got an idea. Out looking for that black eagle. You know why? Mm -hmm. I know why. I hear they want him to become leader of this outfit. But, Bud, this is your gang. You've always been leader. Boys don't want me no more. And you know why. Talk is, you're getting scared. Oh, I'm not getting scared. I'm getting smart. But staying holed up like this all the time ain't making the boys any money. Now we got to keep out of sight, Kitty, for a while. Why? Now, this Black Eagle, uh, he's kicking up such a fuss around here that Captain Sam Kinney's ranger company is heading here to put a stop to him. Now, if they see signs of us, well, what I'm doing is saving the boys from being shot up or sent to the chain gang. And for that, <laughs> they say I turn yellow. The boys still want Black Eagle. Black Eagle. Nobody stops to ask who's Black Eagle. Now, what we have here is some rustler who was supposed to be shot and killed 35 or 40 years ago. And come back from the dead. Nobody comes back from the dead. Oh, but people say that If something's he... impossible, does it matter how many people say it? Then maybe he wasn't killed in the first place. Now, well, now, that makes more sense. Well... But you can still shoot holes in it. Now, if he wasn't killed then... Today, he'd be at least 65, 70, maybe, well, even 80 years old. No, he can't be. The folks who've seen him say he's about 35, maybe 40. So, he's just someone who people think is Black Eagle. Oh, it's that name, that awful name that scares him. Oh, it's more than just a name, bud. He's got the quickest, straightest gun in the West. Except he ain't never smoked no one with it yet. And he's supposed to have killed at least a hundred men. That was the old Black Eagle. One we both agree don't exist no more. Now, from all we heard, this one ain't fired one single shot yet. Now, don't that strike you as kind of funny? Well, I don't know. Should it? Well, a man wants to keep a reputation as a fast gun. He's got to keep shooting. But maybe everybody's scared to try him. It don't matter. Now, all your fast guns like to shoot. And they find ways of getting people to draw on them. Now, that's the thing about this here Black Eagle. What is? I think maybe I'm going to try them. Now, that's what every story needs. Antagonists locked in a struggle for high stakes. And that's just what our story has picked up. Bud King. No living legend he, just a journeyman outlaw. Does he sense what we already know? That the fabulous bad man who has been terrorizing the border is only a chicken in eagle's feathers? The showdown will occur in Act Three in just a few minutes. Fine feathers, they say, do not make fine birds. In that case... How do you account for Black Eagle? We know Black Eagle is, in actuality, a hobo named Chicken from New York City who winters in the Southwest. He has become the legendary Black Eagle through a series of circumstances that are really too complicated to believe. So just relax and take O. Henry's word for it as he resumes telling the story. And so Black Eagle waxed fat and prosperous. Life had never been so easy and pleasant. His cup was running over and with strange liquids like water and milk. Well, he is comfortably ensconced in the guest room of a rancho one night. It was an honor to the ranchero to entertain so great a hero when our chicken, uh, pardon, Black Eagle... Received a visitor. Black Eagle. Uh, yes? It's me. It's Pop. Oh, Pop. 
Listen, son. This can't go on. Oh, what can't go on? The way you're living now. Oh, no? No. You know what's wrong? No. You ain't killed nobody since you got back. Oh, well, I... I uh... Why? Why ain't you killed nobody? Well, I... I, uh, I didn't have to. You did have to. They won't fear you no more. And unless folks sees a corpse now and then, unless folks get to see that lightning draw yours, that dead Abe, they just ain't gonna believe it. Well, I... I uh... It's got to be done. When was the last trade robbery you pulled off? Well, uh... I can tell you, I was there. It was 18 and 71, the year you was killed. That's how long ago it was. Yeah, well, why? What, what do I have to do? There, there's got to be another one soon. And you just have to find a way to kill somebody, too. You, 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 you just got to hold up a train. Well, I can't hold up a train by myself. <laughs> you won't have to. I, I won't have to. What, what, what do you mean? You're going to have a gang. Just like in the old days. A okay. gang? Where? Where where am I going to get a gang? <laughs> There's a ready-made gang just waiting for you. Oh? <laughs> you, you heard of Bud King? Bud King? <laughs> he, he's old Tom King's boy. Bud ain't to show as the old man was, but he's a solid sort of feather. Well, two of the members of his gang looked me up. They asked me if you would become their leader. Their leader? The leader of Bud King's gang. Oh. Well, will, uh, will, will Bud King like that? <laughs> Bud King will have to lump it. Yeah, but still... Uh, uh, unless he wants a showdown, but uh, I don't see the likes of him taking you out. Uh, well, yeah, well, even so... The boys want you as a leader, and you know why? Uh, why? Because you're the best trade robber in the Southwest. Oh, well, Pop, Pop, listen, I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm out of practice, you see. I'll come back to you. I'll give you a hand. Now, I studied out the whole thing for you. There's a little station on the IG and N tracks at a town named the Spina, about 40 miles north of Laredo. Now, now, follow this. Now, Pop, Pop, listen to me. All the countryside for miles is wild. Unsettled. Now, the station's just a little house where the agent lives. The train stops there for one minute. Yeah, but Pop, listen to me. <laughs> it's just as easy as eating apple pie. Now, that's where you jump it. She combines passenger and freight. There'll be four passenger cars, the mail car, and a string of freights and back. Now, you just wait for her to stop. Jump the mail car, and you got yourself one million dollars. Well, uh, Pop... One million dollars. Yeah, I know, I know, Pop, but I just can't see my way clear to... But King's boys are outside waiting for you to go back with yeah, it. Well, I'm trying to tell you, Pop, I just don't think I better do it. You can't turn those fellers down, you just can. Why not? Because they'll think you're chicken. Well, I can't help what people think. You know what this means? The word will get out. What word? The word that Black Eagle has lost his nerve. Oh, now, Pop, this is the year 1905. You can't hold up trains the anymore. The word will go out that Black Eagle is a-slipping. Well, Pop, I, I just can't. Now everybody's gonna try it. Every wet behind the ears Punk is going to look for immortality, is now going to challenge you to draw. You'll be reaching for the holster day and night. Well, therefore, son, you best pay attention so as I can tell you exactly how to hold up that train. And suddenly, Black Eagle was aware of a sinking feeling, as the saying goes, in his chest. It had been easy and comfortable to wear the clothes of Black Eagle. But to become Black Eagle was now, as another saying goes, a horse of a different color. And so he returned with Gotchia Rogers and Bronco Charlie, two members of Bud King's gang. When he arrived, Bud King himself greeted him politely. 
Boys tell me you uh, got a plan for taking a train. Well, uh, and I... since it's your plan, why you're the leader of the gang. Oh, I, w- I wouldn't. Well, want what wind is set for? Uh, well, uh, the sooner the better. Now, any objections tomorrow night? Ah, uh, well, I I think we oh, we ought to. Excuse me, you you had a long ride getting here. Now I'm sure you must be plum tuckered out. Now why don't you get some shut eye? Now we're going to have a long hard day tomorrow. Now, the boys and me was talking over your plan for robbing the train, Black Eagle. And we think you should be the one to hold up the express car. Ah, uh, me, me, me. Well, sure. Well, I, I, uh, I thought I'd, I'd be up front taking care of the engineer. Well, you being the leader now, you wouldn't want somebody else to take the express responsibility, would you? Well, uh, of course uh, not. Uh, it's now in the heart of the job. There's only one guard in the express car. Now, he's got a shotgun. But that shouldn't bother you. You can just shoot it out of his hand. Ah, uh, well... And uh, I, that's what they say you used to do. Ah, uh, yeah, but... Oh, so uh, it's all set then, right? Now, uh, you're going to take on the express car. And after you get all that taken care of, the rest of us move in. at the head of a column of mounted desperados. Our own chicken, or black eagle, if you will. Suddenly, for the first time, he became conscious of a great weight around his waist. For the first time, he realized what it was. The two heavy holsters with the Navy Colt revolvers. Till now, he had worn them as mere decoration, but... Now he realized that these were guns and bullets, and they were used to kill people. He'd never held a gun in his hand, much less fired it. Uh, The night's so dark, we won't be able to see you from here. Uh, You'll have to fire three shots to let us know to go ahead with it. Uh, Go ahead with it? Why, sure. Uh, If you can't handle the express car, there ain't no sense us trying to hold up the rest of the train. Oh. Now, you remember, she only stops for one minute. So that's all the time you've got to do your part of the job. Ah, one minute, huh? One minute to get the express car guard and give us the signal to do the rest of the train. Ah, one minute. Mm Mm-hmm. And I can't tell you how excited the boys are. The thought of getting that one million dollars. Eagle? What? Uh-oh. Black Eagle? Uh, who, who's that? Oh, it's only me, Kitty. Oh, oh, Kitty. I know I'm supposed to be up ahead near the station. Yeah. But I'm on my errand of mercy rounds. Uh, what, what, what's that? Well, that's what Bud calls it. You see, he don't allow no drinking while there's a job to be done. But everybody needs just a little bit of a lift. So, I got this bottle, and I make sure everybody gets one little drink. Oh. So here, take yours. Uh, no, 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 I I better not. Better not? No. Why, I heard the Black Eagle's the hardest drinking man north of the border. Well, uh... Of course, maybe you don't need one. All you're going to do is hold up the express car. Oh, uh... There's nothing to do. That shotgun guard will take one look at you and just drop his weapon. Beg for his life. <laughs> Who wants to fight with Black Eagle? Yeah, yeah, then everything's going to be all right. That's right. Uh, one well, look. Let's drink to that. Uh, no, I better not, no. You know, I go for you, Black Eagle. Huh? And after you kill Bud... Uh, after, after I what? Kill Bud. Oh, you have to kill Bud. He'll have to draw on you. He don't want to give up his job. Well, well, uh... Well, why do we waste time talking? The train will be here soon. Come on, let's have that little drink. Oh, but, uh... One just... little drink. And one little kiss. Uh... Mm-mm. Oh. Is that so hard to take? Well, well... Mm-mm. Another little kiss. Well, uh... Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Well, well, I I really shouldn't be. And again. And again. And one more time. I 
Yes. I'll see you afterward, honey. And be sure, but don't shoot you in the back. Where am I? What am I doing here? What are these guns and, and, and this hat? Oh, no, no, no. The railroad cop will think I'm abandoned. I'd better get rid of them right now. And, and, and this hat. And, uh-oh. This here train is this freight. There's an open door. Maybe I can climb into it. Climb into this box. Oh, oh my head. Oh. oh, I gotta climb up into this car. Somehow. Want well, a hand, friend? Huh? Grab hold. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, thanks. Up you go. Oh. Oh. Oh, you're, you're gonna like this box car, Fred. Oh. I always pick one with lots of nice excelsior on the floor. Nice and comfortable as a, as a puma. Hey, hey, Snuffy. <laughs> That's old Coney Island Snuffy, huh? <laughs> and, and you're chicken. What are you doing out here, chicken? Oh, I always spend the winters out here, Snuffy. Uh, you, know, you sound happy and <laughs> content. Would you just happen to have some of that elixir of joy in your possession? Am I ever with Without it, Snuffy. And so you claim you were actually Black Eagle? Oh, yes, sir, I was. And had you remained sober that night, you would have actually held up that express car? Oh, no, sir. No, you've got it wrong. Had I remained drunk? You see, sir... I'm drunk when I don't drink. Drunk with power. It's only when I drink that I'm sober enough to realize I'm only a chicken. And there the matter must rest. O. Henry passes the story on to us just as it happened, without comment or explanation. If you think it's too far-fetched, why, just examine some of the things you think are so logical, and uh, you'll find them just as... Uh, as what? At any rate, you'll find me here again in just a few minutes. Man was made to dream, and one of the world's greatest dreamers, Mr. O. Henry, himself, busied himself with the stuff of those dreams, and he found what we know to be true. That dreams need something or someone to set them in motion. However, it's something else for all of us. There's dreaming enough and to spare right here on Mystery Theater. Our cast included Robert Dryden, Larry Haynes, Evie Juster, Paul Tripp, and Earl Hammond. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our Mystery Theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant 